Hi, I'm Ben. And I'm Tadeo. Welcome to the transcript. <laughs> this week, the transcript explores the implementation of the inclusion model at Bridge Street School, sits down with members of the NHS boys ice hockey team, and investigates claims that the Super Bowl is rigged. On Wednesday, the Associated Press published an investigation detailing the existence of five mass graves in Myanmar that were previously undisclosed. The evidence of these graves supports U.S. and United Nations charges of ethnic cleansing of the Rohingya people in Myanmar. Myanmar's government has repeatedly denied any organized activity against the Rohingya people. On Monday, Republicans on the House Intelligence Committee voted to make public a classified memo which reportedly details surveillance abuses by the FBI and Justice Department toward the Trump campaign. The FBI released a statement that calls into question the factual accuracy of the memo. On Wednesday, Representative Adam Schiff, the ranking Democratic member on the committee, accused the committee chairman Nunez of sending a different version of the memo to the White House than had been voted on by the committee. It is now up to the White House to decide whether or not the memo becomes public. In Cape Town, the city's water supply is running dangerously low. Authorities have warned that day zero, when taps in homes and businesses will be turned off, could come in less than three months. When day zero arrives, the government believes that the police force will be inadequate and that the military will need to be called in. This comes after a three-year drought in Cape Town. The city is scrambling to complete desalination plants and impose harsh fines on residents that exceed their daily water ration. Hi, I'm Flor Castillo, and this is Tell It Like It Is. In the past week, many of you may have heard quite a bit of buzz about Bridge Street School. This week, we're exploring the new special education model and its effect on students. Last year, Bridge Street Elementary School incorporated a new special education model, which incorporates special students into mainstream classrooms instead of being separated for their own needs. Some have claimed that this has been the cause of students and educators to experience a chaotic environment. I sat down with Andrea Egito, NACE Chapter Coordinator, and Sadie Cora, Professional Rights and Responsibilities Chairwoman, to explain in more depth this new inclusion model. The rollout of the new model happened differently at different schools. At Bridge, what they have is they have one classroom in each grade that has more students and has two licensed teachers in the classroom, one a general education teacher and one a special education teacher, and then the other classrooms are smaller um, with less students and um, just a regular education teacher. The situation now, there are a lot of kids who have a lot of needs who used to be in the program um, and those those kind of big behaviors are bubbling up in the classrooms because there's not a separate space like there was when there was a program. Parents and teachers from Bridge Street School alleged that the demands for the new inclusion model are high and have left them overwhelmed due to low staffing. They claim that this has sparked violent incidents against students and teachers in the school. I really don't think it's fair for NACE to portray Bridge Street as unsafe for staff. The aggression I've seen has really not been different from the aggression that I've seen in other schools in Northampton or in other schools where I've worked. Bridge Street has the highest staffing levels in the district. We did that because we know it has the highest needs in the district. The Northampton Association of School Employees filed a grievance on Monday, January 8th, detailing understaffed classrooms, chaotic hallways, injuries, and constant stress for teachers and students this year. I also asked them to walk me through the grievance process and what NACE hopes to get out of the, filing this grievance. The current grievance that was filed was a concern uh, around workplace conditions. There has been an effort to put more supports in place um, and, and to hear people, um, but I'm not sure that it's been fully resolved in the way that, that people would like. We really need a full-time school psychologist. We really need a full-time BCBA in addition to possibly 
another special ed teacher or some um, teacher assistance ESPs. The public will have to wait until NACE and the school committee members have a response soon. I'm Flor Castillo and this was Tell It Like It Is. I'm sorry. The old hamped up reporter can't come to the phone right now. Why? Because he's dead. Hi, I'm Lulu. Welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this? There is no official boys ice hockey team here at NHS, so boys hockey players have to play with neighboring towns. Boys from Northampton, along with Hampshire Regional and Smith Folk, all play for the East Hampton boys ice hockey team. The team is off to a successful start, currently riding at the top of their division with a 6-2-3 record. I sat down with sophomores Jake Delisle and Ben Howe to discuss their experiences playing on this unique team. Well, last year we had a pretty young team and it was our coach's first year. So um, having a year under our belt is certainly helpful and um, we've started to get more chemistry as we play together more. Um, it affects the team's chemistry because we all played together, or most of us played together on a club team. And uh, Gabe is just really supportive on the bench and boys get rowdy. I also sat down with junior Gabe Broder to discuss his personal goals and plans for the future. Well, for the season, I hope that uh, we can make it to Western Mass, hopefully further. And uh, as far as after high school, I don't know, hopefully play some club hockey in college. Uh, what probably caused the switch from defense to offense is, uh, you know, Defense is less work and all, that's why Pat plays it. He likes to take the easy way out, but uh, I like to get in there and work and uh, look good. And I uh, definitely had some influence from my uh, teammates, Jake Batchelder and CJ Tenza, because we're best friends. The hockey team has an away game tomorrow at Greenfield at 5.30. The girls basketball team faces off against rival Longmeadow home tonight at 7. Both girls and boys indoor track team have a home meet tonight at 6.45 at Smith. The boys and girls swim team has a qualifying meet tomorrow at Minichog. Thanks for watching Hamped Up, I'm Lulu Kesson. Howdy, I'm Mikey Diaz. Last week Bruno Mars won six Grammy Awards, joining an elite group of artists to win six or more in one night. Nice. In other news, Congrats, Patriots fans, you're going to the Super Bowl, again. Tom Brady and Bill Belichick have secured the franchise's 10th Super Bowl appearance and just their 8th since the turn of the century. The already five-time Super Bowl champions will take on the Philadelphia Eagles on Sunday. The Eagles are 0-3 in the big game and haven't had an appearance since losing to the Patriots in 2004, after they narrowly lost, after Eagles quarterback Donovan McNabb threw an interception with less than two minutes to go. Many non-Patriots fans have claimed that the NFL has rigged the game in favor of its poster boy, Tom Brady, and the Patriots. I took to the halls at NHS to ask the students if they think the NFL has ever rigged a game. Do you think the NFL has ever rigged a football game? Yes. I think the NFL makes rules to, to benefit some teams over others. If that's rigged, then yes, I do. Absolutely not. I don't believe so, but I'm not really sure. I don't think that. Uh, no, but I haven't seen it every game. No. Yes. Yeah, no, uh, sports are a lie. For sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, most definitely. These claims come after a season of controversial game-changing plays that seem to favor the Patriots. It's time we settle this once and for all. I talked with Mike Morin, sports editor of the Daily Hampshire Gazette, to get to the bottom of this. I think the debate is more geared toward social media and bloggers as opposed to the mainstream media. A lot of anti-Patriot fans out there, they're tired of seeing them, so they're, rather than taking the game and looking at why they win, people tend to look at maybe reasons why they shouldn't be winning. I think what the league does favor are quality uh, teams, competitive games, that's why you don't see the Cleveland Browns on Monday Night Football very often. Patriots have historically managed games better than ever, anyone. So I think if somebody's looking at saying that the league has a bias, that's really, it's, it's almost 
like a knock at saying the Patriots do their job too good, that it just, they, they shouldn't be able to play football that well and be that successful. I think the outcome of trying to rig a game has a, more, a bigger negative effect than positive effects because if it ever got out that the games were rigged, your league is just going down, down the drain. Who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl on Saturday? The Patriots, obviously. 27-10, Patriots take the dub. 45 to nothing. 21 to zero. 20 to seven. I think the Eagles are going to win. 21 to zip. 27-24. 4-3. I think they've rigged it for the Patriots, and so I think the Patriots will win again on Sunday because they have all the rules behind them. The Patriots and Eagles will square off this Sunday at U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Kickoff is at 3.30 Eastern Time. I'm Mikey Diaz, and this was In Other News. Make sure to come out to the Town Hall 4th period today with National Congressman Jim McGovern. This is an extremely rare and amazing opportunity. If you have a question about any national issue, just write it down on a note card with your name. And you'll be called down to ask the man who represents you in Congress. Don't forget to head over to nhstechnology.org to watch this week's online extra. I wrote a rock opera about the building of the Brooklyn Bridge and it's a mystical and mythical version of it.